Welcome everyone to Throwback Gaming's Let's Play of Our Life, Beginnings and Always, Part 27. It's been a little bit, but from what I remember, we started chat, um, Part 3, well, Step 3, <laughs> and we're adults now. Lizzie's all grown up and she's moved out. She's going to college, but she's come back for the... I don't say the summer, but she came back to visit a little bit, and we hung out with her, and it was pretty cool. We ended up running into Shiloh downtown with her, except he acted like he didn't know who we were for some reason. Then again, it's been a long time, so maybe he forgot. And um, Cove came back. Apparently, he was away. I don't know if it's for school or job or whatever, but he's back in town at the moment. And apparently, we've been doing long distance with him. And... That's all I can remember, really. So, let's see what's going on, shall we? As soon as you were outside your front door, you couldn't help but see Cove and his dad standing around in the road. They noticed you, too. <laughs> Gotta love Mr. Holden. He's, he's so cool. Hey there, Jamie. Cove smiled lightly and waved. When you began making your way over, he added, Hey. Excuse me. You waved at him, you hugged him, you gave him a high five, you gave him a nookie, <laughs> you ruffled his hair, or you kissed him. Well, excuse me. Mr. Holden's right there. I'll just give him a hug. Hugs are always nice. Melting into his arms, Cove held you tightly until you were ready to let go. Aww. Hugs are nice. <laughs> His eyes shone brightly with so much adoration that you feared your heart might stop. Even after all this time, being with him hadn't gotten any less thrilling. Well, that's good. <laughs> you noticed Mr. Holden was t taking in the scene of you and Cove with a self-satisfied smile. Cove followed your line of sight and shot his dad an unimpressed look. For a moment, Mr. Holden seemed like he had thought dancing on the tip of his... Oh, he had a thought dancing on the tip of his tongue, but he decided to keep it to himself. <laughs> it's not what I thought it said for a second. <laughs> Help me. So, what you up to today? Me and Cove are meeting some friends later. We're gonna paint the town red. Exciting. They won't know what hit him. I bet Mr. Holden was cool back in the day. <laughs> Well, I mean, we grew up with him, but you know what I'm saying, like when he was our age. Cove shook his head disapprovingly, but you knew him well enough to tell that he was entertained by your notion. Yawning, Mr. Holden's getting old. I mean, granted, our parents are old too. They're like probably in their 50s or late late 50s at this point, because it's been, like I said, we're like 18, so <laughs> yeah, they're probably in their late 50s. Yawning, Mr. Holden stretched his arms over his head. My boy and me had just been waiting around to see what the new neighbors were like. Oh yeah, that's right. The the cranky old neighbors from when we were little finally moved away and we got some new people. So they're being nosy. That's right. It was definitely his idea. I don't think you're not interested in this. It's big news. Besides, it'd only be polite to greet the new folks in town. Maybe it'll be a single dad and his son. You, you've been here too long to see if a new person running a condo is what you consider an exciting development. <laughs> yes, I'm dying to see the newcomers. Your response was just a shrug, or I don't want to meet them. Or, well, anyone has to be better than the last tenants. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> That's awful. Sad but true. Hmm, I don't know. That house could be cursed, and we could be getting ones that are progressively worse. <laughs> uh, it's like a Stephen King novel. Am I wrong? <laughs> he cracked a cheeky grin at his own joke. You could tell Mr. Holden was looking at the empty house, thinking about the nightmare that was the last tendons. He chuckled, turning to Cove. But that would be horrible. Knock on wood. Mr. Holden took one more glance at the currently vacant building and sighed dramatically. 
When he turned back to you and Cove, his whole body seemed deflated. There's no sign of them, and I still need to head over to work soon. Cove gave his dad a few reassuring pats on the back. Okay, I'll promise to keep an eye out. I can text you if anything happens. Really? Yeah, of course. I mean, well, until I have to meet up with Terry and Miranda. Would that still work? Mm. Excuse me. Miranda is uh, that girl we went to the birthday party with. And Terry is apparently good friends with Cove. I guess before he moved here, so that's interesting. And Terry and Miranda are good friends, so that's kind of funny. With a wide grin breaking out on his face, Mr. Holden looked absolutely thrilled to have his nosiness enabled. <laughs> that works. He moved to firmly place both his hands on Cove's shoulders, fixing his child in a firm stare. Son, you are my true ally in this world. I kind of feel bad Mr. Holden never... Well, he still loves Cove's mom, and I don't know if they're going to get back together, but, I mean, it's been a long time, so I doubt it, but... It would be nice if Mr. Holden kind of had somebody to be with, you know? But, you know, it's not for everybody. Mr. Horton stood up straighter, letting Cove go. He looked revigorated. Okay, with that settled, I'll go make some money. That's always been the one thing I do best. Well, that's good. Mr. Horton headed off to the garage with a big wave goodbye. Cove smiled the whole time you both watched his dad leave. I'm glad that him and his dad are having a better um, relationship now. You really liked Mr. Holden. Mr. Holden was one of your favorite people. Is that really the same thing? Cove's dad was kind of like a bother. Uh, no. You had mixed feelings on Mr. Holden. He was one of your favorite people. Mr. Holden's cool. He always tried his best and honestly was just great. As soon as he was out of sight, Cove sighed lightly. Are you okay? Yeah, just not looking forward to waiting. Guess I'll be hanging around the street for a while. <laughs> Good luck, I'm out. <laughs> see you later, bye. <laughs> I'll stick around and see the new neighbor. I can wait with you, or why don't I stay to see the neighbor and keep you company? Curiosity about the new tenant was getting the better of you, and you figured that the wait wouldn't be too much longer. And besides, you just couldn't leave Cove. Let's be honest, it's really the second reason, but... <laughs> really? Of course. He stared at you at a moment, smiling softly and thinking about his response. I like that too. Cove put his hands on your shoulders, his thumbs absentmindedly moving in a soothing circle. The look in his eyes was much firmer. He was serious. Jamie... You're my true ally in this world. Oh. They got a fair amount of chuckles from you. He grinned, the stoicism fading into amusement. Thank you. I knew you stayed for me. You're lucky to have me. <laughs> it's no problem. That's kind of arrogant. I can't help myself. You laughed, you shook your head, or you simply shrugged. <laughs> I can't help myself. Yeah, well, good then. I don't know what I'd do without you. A smile on his face reached his eyes and it made you feel electric. It's electric. <laughs> and then he let go of you. Cove stepped over to his front porch steps, lazily taking a seat and leaning back on his arms. Our watch begins. Oops. Nodding in agreement, you joined Cove on the front porch steps. You both sat there in, a, in the comfortable familiarity as you settled in for the waiting game on the new tidbits. <clears throat> Excuse me. The neighborhood was quiet, and you sighed contently, closing your eyes and feeling the light breeze. The only sound you could hear was the familiar jingle of Cove's wind chime. <laughs> it's the wind chime that we bought him back at the mall. I love it. After all these years, it was still there, adorning the entrance outcropping the entrance outcropping his house. Eventually, you both perked up at the sound of a car. A taxi followed the noise turning onto your street. Cove's eyebrows raised at the sight, and he sat up straighter on the stoop. This has to be them, right? 
I don't know, it could be your mom. <laughs> the only people who come out of here live here. It has to be. Now that they were here, you couldn't help but feel just a little bit curious. You wonder what kind of person would be living in the neighborhood for the summer. Hopefully they're nicer than the, the people that inhabited it last time. The taxi pulled to a stop as you expected in front of the now empty condo. It was only, I mean, <clears throat> it was on the same side of the street as your house. A few buildings further up. Without getting to his feet, Co tried leading and tilting his head to get a view of the passenger door as it opened. The, the single occupant exited the cab. Okay, so it's a single person. Okay. Huh? You could feel what Cove was in that moment. After a few runners, this new visitor was definitely not what you expected. It was a young man. Okay, he's a lot younger than expected. And look at his outfit. It's got, like, eyes on it or something. <laughs> it was a young man who had to be close to your own age. He was dressed fully in elastic black, um, yeah, black, white, and gray outfit. Even his side-swooped hair matched the scheme. Interesting. The only other pop of color was from something that could be easily fashioned into submission. A pair of dark brown eyes. Which you caught when he looked over at his audience. Hey folks, who might you be? We're the neighbors. The smile already prompted on his face curled further. It was cocky, but you didn't get the impression it meant something adverse. Hallelujah. You and Co shared a familiar look with one another, bewildered even further. The color coordinated man left it there, however, and with a firm click, he shut the door of his ride. Then he turned his back to you to retrieve a large, unsurprising black suitcase out of the trunk. Continuing on with his business, he strolled further and lightly tapped the driver door with his knuckles, asking for them to roll it down. When it opened, he leaned down and rested his arm on the edge. You assumed he was thanking the driver for getting him there, considering he slipped them a tip during the brief chat. They shook their hands, and then he pushed himself up and away from the taxi with both arms, giving the driver room to leave. The taxi pulled away, rolling carefully down the road and out of sight, around the corner. The new renter had officially arrived. Excuse me. He left his suitcase on the ground, out of the way of the street, and sawed it over your way with the confidence of someone who had been invited to join. Okay, for those who don't know, this is the third and I believe the final romantic option in the game. You are able to date Cove, which is the first option. The second option is dating, um, oh, what's his name? The little basketball dude from the, from step two. Can't think of what his name is right now. He's the second date option that you could possibly have, and I believe he's the third, this guy's the third and final one. So, yeah, just so you know. <laughs> but for all intents and purposes of this playthrough, we're going to stick with Cove. So he's just going to be just a regular character. But I'm just saying, if you're playing along, if you decided not to pick Cove and you didn't decide to pick the other dude, this guy's the third option if you wanted someone, you know? But yeah, all right. Cove finally stood up to greet this person, and you followed suit. Okay, his name is Baxter. I'm Baxter Ward. It's excellent to meet you, neighbors. I hope he's not like the dude off of, uh, no, I'm thinking of Dexter. <laughs> Wrong name. <laughs> Help me. Alright. You were standing on the side, you were standing on the side he was approaching from. When Baxter got close enough, he offered his hand to you first. Ooh, is Kofi to get jealous? You shook it, you offered him a low five, you held your arms open to offer a hug instead. <laughs> oh, I bet he wouldn't like that. You kept your distance. Uh, we'll shake his hand. We'll be friendly. Hopefully this doesn't upset Co. Baxter grips your hand firmly to give a satisfying shake. Welcome to Sunset Bird, Baxter. I'm Jamie. Hi, Jamie. I am quite keen on getting to know you better this summer. We could be good friends. We all ain't gonna be friends, dude. Calm down. <laughs> From the other side, Cove made a sudden sputtering noise. Mm, maybe he is getting jealous. 
And you are? He lifted his hand out to Cove next. Okay. Cove instead crossed his arms to express his rejection of the idea, still eyeing back super carefully. He's like, back off, he's mine. <laughs> I'm Cove. He don't like this guy. Baxter's hoe demeanor lit up for unknown reasons. His eyes shone as he studied Cove a moment. No, wait. Is that a nickname or your real name? Dude, you are digging yourself a hole that you are not going to get out of. You need to stop talking. It's just my name. Cove spoke mildly, mildly, having given the explanation many times in the past. But it was clear, clearly charmed... It, but it clearly charmed Baxter all the same. He tossed his head to one side with a laugh. Your parents know exactly what they were doing. I can't imagine a more fitting name for the face I'm seeing. Cove, that's gorgeous. This dude's just been here like three minutes and he's already flirting with Cove. Mm -mm -mm. It's, it's really not. No, I agree, it suits you. <laughs> hey, only I get to fluster him. <laughs> That's a lot, considering you're talking to a stranger, Baxter. You didn't know what to say or he's taken. <laughs> Let's think about this for a second. What should we pick? <sighs> I guess we'll just let him know that we're a thing, so he's aware of the situation. Oh, that's disappointing, but not surprising. I'm guessing he's yours. Yep. Sorry, Baxter, you have to find your own boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> Yes. Mm, Cove is jelly. <laughs> Jamie is my boyfriend. Aw, oh, that's crushing, but it makes sense. I got here too late, obviously. Though really, I didn't mean to intrude on anything you have. Well, that's good. He's being respectful. I'm patiently... Oh, I'm patently against stepping on anyone's toes. He chuckled to himself. It seemed like there was something extra meaning hidden there in his words, and you noticed Cove raising an eyebrow, picking up on that too. Hmm. He is alluding to something, but we don't know what it is yet. Baxter didn't even open his eyes to see your face to know that he had some feeling in to do. He stood up straighter. Excuse me. Striking a slight pose with the position of his feet. I'm a ballroom dancer. Hence the phrasing. Oh, okay. He was making an inside joke because he's a ballroom dancer. Oh, I don't really see it, but I mean, interesting. Oh, I don't know much about dancing, but that's pretty cool. It's not hard once you get the basics down. He's trying to flex. <laughs> Cove didn't look convinced at all. Baxter took that as a cue to keep talking. Well, he grinned in a way that was rapidly becoming familiar to you. If either of you were ever looking for a partner, I'm available. I'll pass. Cove peeked at you, smiling softly. You felt his familiar touch as he squeezed your hand for a moment. Sorry. There's only one person I want to dance with. Sorry. I can accept that. Well, at least he's being cool about it. I'll take you up on that offer sometime. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Obviously, we have to say this one. <laughs> Baxter smiled and nodded understandingly, letting the subject go. After that, there was a lull in conversation, and Cove attempted to fill it in. Uh, what made you decide on Sunset Bird? Oh yes, well my parents rented a condo, so I had a place to stay while I'm off for a semester from college not living in the dorms. So he's just on vacation. There was a playful glint in Baxter's eyes as he continued. Ideally, they wanted me to, to send me somewhere that wasn't too exciting, but lucky for me, they picked the wrong street. Considering the two you live here. Baxter then preemptively lifted his hands up to the front of his chest, giving the gesture for meaning no harm. It's nice not to be the only one my around my age for the neighborhood for the entire summer. Nothing more. That was a story you had heard before. The same one as when Lonely Cove and his dad moved here all those years ago. Cove wasn't related. Still. You could have phrased it like that in the first place. I don't feel the need to keep words of praise to myself, but they're not romantic come-ons. I see that you two are very much a committed pair. I'd like to be friends if we can, but that's all. It's okay. 
it doesn't bother me. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that with me. I'm finding it pretty entertaining. <laughs> You're probably annoyed. A lot of people you stood there unsure how to react. Hmm. I guess we'll go with this one. Glad we're working things out. Shifting his weight on his other foot, Baxter tried to move forward. So, which condo is yours? How long have you been living together? <laughs> we don't live together. We're just... <laughs> oh, no. Cove sputtered out again, and unintentionally a laugh escaped you. We're uh, both your neighbors, but we live in different houses with our parents. As if second nature, the two of you pointed to your homes, the buildings directly across the street from each other. Baxter's eyes raised at that. Your neighbors who started dating. What a couple lovebirds. You're the backbone of the romantic society. I know, it's adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Honestly, I hope you never break up. If you can make it work, there might be a chance for the rest of us. <laughs> you knew Cove well enough to tell there was a little bit of amusement in his expression, but he sighed in exasperation. After that, you had no doubts about his claims of being complimentary. You were really starting to get a kick out of it. <laughs> Well, if either you were free, I'd be thrilled to hang out this summer, but we can save the, the schedule talk for later. I should get my things inside. I'm sure he's going to be an interesting um, person to hang out with, even if it's just as a friend. He gave a small nod of his head and flashed you both a dazzled look. A smile. <laughs> goodbye for today. Cove simply waved goodbye. Bye. Baxter then turned on his heels and strolled down to his suitcase, picking it up and bringing it to his condo. You and Cove were silent as Baxter unlocked the door and disappeared inside the house. With him completely out of the scene, Cove let out a long breath. I don't know how I'm going to explain that that guy to my dad. <laughs> well, just tell him that he thought we were both cute and he was trying to hit on us and then we told him we were taken. So he decided to be friendly. <laughs> You burst into a fit of laughter trying to imagine the conversation. At least the job is done. We saw the new neighbor and now we can go meet up with Terry and Miranda. Yeah, we should get going. You gave Baxter's condo one last, one last glance over your shoulder. You were looking forward to seeing him more often. You thought he was charming. You were not interested in him. You weren't sure how you felt. You thought he gave a pretty bad first impression. Or he, you definitely... He decided he definitely wasn't someone you liked. Um. I guess we can say this one, but like in a friendly sense, not like, oh, we want to date him, you know? Because we would go. Baxter was different, but you liked him. Smiling, you hoped he'd become a good friend this summer. Exactly. That's the exact right idea. I think he'll be an interesting person to hang out with. Turning your attention back to Cove, you pushed all your thoughts of Baxter aside. You both started making your way towards town. You took his hand, you took his arm, you walked next to him side by side. I'll take his hand. You slid your palm into his and Cove laced his fingers with yours. His expression instantly became happier and he lightly squeezed your hand. A little while later, you and Cove reached the main street in town. All of a sudden, you stopped walking. What's wrong? I think I felt my phone vibrate. You dug your cell phone out and looked at it with a satisfied grin. There was a new message. You opened the message from Miranda and all you saw was, I can see you. <laughs> Immediately from where you stood, you started swiveling your head around. You couldn't spot Miranda anywhere, but she did send you one more message. I saw you holding Cove's hand. Scandalous. <laughs> That's adorable. Where are you? Ha ha, come on. Really, Randy? <laughs> Let's go with this one. <laughs> come on. The message was sent, and you were back to looking around, scanning for any sign of movement and familiar faces. But they were still invisible. Cove looked at you carefully, raising an eyebrow. Miranda, come on out. <laughs> You sighed at the ridiculousness, you burst into laughter at her antics, you sent your own joking text, or you grabbed into Cove again wanting to show Miranda how scandalous you could be. <laughs> Let's send our own joking text. If you want to keep hiding, 
Cove and me can just go do our own stuff without you, is what you decided on. You smirked, hitting on the sim button. Cove looked at you curious, raising an eyebrow. Uh, what's happening? Before you could even begin to explain anything to Cove, you both snapped your attention to the yelling across the street. And there you saw Miranda and Terry coming out from behind the backside wall of the grocery store. They both started waving wildly to, to draw attention even more. Uh, wait a minute. Waving wildly to draw even more attention to themselves. Cove took a step in their direction. He grinned and waited for them to get closer. Laughing and arm in arm, the girls stopped only to look both ways and then rushed across the empty street. Hi, I hope you weren't waiting too long. Hey, okay, so this is Terry. Cool. Hey, buddies. Hey. Hey. That joke was not funny. <laughs> I'm amazed. How did you appear out of nowhere like that? Hey, I'm so happy to see the two of you. I thought you both knew better than to jaywalk. Wordlessly, you waved. They started giggling again. Terry glanced at Miranda, wondering what their story should be. It was magic. Gesturing in a vaguely whimsical manner, Terry went along with the decision. <laughs> and magicians never reveal their secrets. <laughs> That's fair. Terry then closed the distance between her and Cove and crushed him in a painfully tight hug. You're finally here. It's been so long. What took you? He did his best to eke out a reply with his chest being compressed. Sorry. Eventually, she let him go. Terry looked at him with a beaming smile, but Cove was distracted, rubbing his arms. Standing there, Miranda shifted her weight to her other hip. She watched Cove patiently with a bashful smile. Welcome back. Thanks. Excuse me. It finally felt official. Everyone was together in one place. From here, you weren't sure how often you would see another afternoon like this again. They didn't either. Cove. Cherry Poke Cove squarely in the chest. You're going to have to get me your schedule by this time yesterday. Not really possible, Terry, but I can say as soon as I know. So far, work hasn't said anything, but I can tell you I'm busy with orca activities. And that probably stands for something. <laughs> okay, so his job is why he's been here, here and there. Okay, good to know. When Cove wasn't at his part-time job, or pursuing his academic interests, he volunteered for the Ocean Restoration California Affiliation. Goodness, that is a mouthful. So he has a part-time job, he's in school, and he also volunteers for the Ocean Restoration California Affiliation. <laughs> Gosh. He's a busy boy. The group focused on cleaning up beaches and removing pollution from the ocean. That sounds like him and his dad. Not that it's a bad thing. Cove always loved the sea. It didn't surprise you one bit when he started getting involved with them. It was Cove's activity. You joined Orca too after learning of it. You were an Orca member and introduced Cove to it. It was probably the other way around, so. <laughs> Their big smash event for the year is coming right up, isn't it? Yeah. There's not much more to do before then, but I'm kind of looking forward to the fundraising push. Hopefully we can pull it off. If anyone can do it, it's you two. And even if it goes really bad, it'll still look good on a college application at least. Hmm, that's true. Hey, hey guess what else? We don't have to stand here to say stuff. Let's go. I'd like a meal now. Pickering up, Cove nodded in agreement. Yeah, I'm hungry. Time to head out. The four of you headed into town, happily chatting the whole way. The only decision left was to make was where to stop and eat. The rest of the afternoon passed, oh, afternoon and evening passed in a blink of an eye. When night fell, it was time to head home, and you parted ways with Miranda and Terry. They're going to be fun this summer. You and Cove reached your neighborhood without event. It was late enough that 
your out of the way street was dark and silent. You were walking tardily after such a long day. You strolled with a skip in your step. You ambled along. Or Cove was giving you a piggyback ride home. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. You yawned, stretching your arms high over your head. It was taking a lot of mental focus to keep up and walk alongside Cove. As you did so, you peered at his face out of the corner of your eyes. You wondered why he felt so distant to you. It was out of character. For a while, Cove silently stared ahead and left you alone with your own thoughts. Well, he has a lot going on, so he's probably got a lot on his mind. It surprised you when you did hear his voice all of a sudden. He still wouldn't look at you. It feels weird coming back to the neighborhood and trying to get into things like they're the same. And they're not. They've changed and they're still changing. Your mouth felt uncomfortably dry all of a sudden. Now that's right, he doesn't like change. It was true, the things that kept the people you knew together were starting to disappear. Each person had to make their own priorities and their own path now that it wasn't set for them. That's how life is though, you know? You gotta start making your own choices in life. You gotta figure out what kind of job you wanna do, whether that involves school or, you know, some um, full-time job somewhere. And if you end up meeting people, you know, at some point you might get married, you might not, but regardless, you're going to meet people and everybody's path branches out based on who they meet and what job they do and things like that, you know. Back when you're growing up and you're in school, you kind of have to do things a certain way, you know, so things are more, um, more structured for you. It's kind of sad, though, missing out on people you used to hang out with and stuff, but you meet new people and things. You had been considering more and more, and the ideas were starting to settle in your mind. You hoped to go to school full-time, to go to school part-time, to work full-time, to work part-time, to focus on time that's not school or work. <laughs> oh. And that was the basics. Apparently. For your career, you thought you'd find a company to work at, work online, do contract work, start your own business. Find a company to work at, work online, yeah. For your education, you thought you'd attend community college, public university, private college, trade school, take online classes. Well, I've taken some community college and I've done some online classes. <laughs> For yourself, you wanted to work on self-improvement on yourself, take some time to relax, try to figure out what you truly wanted. <laughs> How about all three of these things? Can we pick all three? <laughs> Ooh, we can't pick all three. Nice. Because that's so true. <laughs> and for what you wanted to do, I feel like I'm filling out a questionnaire. <laughs> Stay local. Go to a different part of the state. Go out of the state. Go abroad. Travel around to different places. Well, currently, um, I mean, I would like to stay local. But I'd also oh that's just one okay whatever <laughs> it'd all be happening so soon you already applied to schools and jobs you already applied to schools you already applied to jobs you started to prepare for what was coming you hadn't even begun to do anything yet start preparing and you've been open about your situation everybody knew you only spoke about this family and those you were close to, like Cove. You kept all this to yourself. Cove was the only person you knew. Now that you were wondering what Cove had in mind, you heard him consider some things for his future, but it was never anything that would have counted as a real plan. Making it back home, you both stopped in the middle of the street and Cove sighed. Cove looked at the ground for a moment, his mouth trembling, trying to settle on the right words to say. So are you thinking about relaxing for a while and stuff in Sunset Bird. 
Yeah, you remembered. Cole closed his eyes and nodded while he composed his thoughts. He looked at you when he lifted his head. Maybe he wants you to come with him. I decided on something. Well, kind of. Okay. He smiled slightly and rubbed his arm, and then his expression grew more serious. I'm not going to decide on a school or a career. Not this summer. I'm going to stay here, at least in Sun Zipper. I'll probably move out of my dad's place. I'll keep working my job, keep doing my volunteer stuff, and everything else. Maybe I'll know what I want for myself by fall, or next year, or maybe I'll never have a plan. Life will continue on with what's ever happening. Whatever's happening, happening. I'm not going to crush myself for trying to have everything figured out by a timeline that someone else has set. I just can't do it. His brow furrowed and his tone was tense. It was clear how much expectations were weighing on him. I guess it'll be me and you right here for a while longer. Excuse me. His eyes were glossy. You weren't going to be separated and that meant a great deal to him. Your plan sounds very you. <laughs> it does. You nodded very understandingly. You were glad that the two of you would be in Sunset Bird together. Somehow I'm not surprised things turned out this way or you weren't sure how to react. Sounds very like you. Cove grinned. He looked relieved that you understood. I think so too. I'll see you tomorrow, Jamie. And I think his dad would be cool with that too. I mean, his Mr. Holden's pretty laid back. And I mean, it's not like he's not working. He's working, he's volunteering, and he's going to try to move out of his dad's house. So, I mean, I don't see any problems with it. <laughs> if I was his dad. I'm already looking forward to it. Night. He pulled you into an unexpected hug. It knocked the breath out of you, yet you couldn't have been re had a re worse or... Bleh. Yet you couldn't have been... You couldn't have been a more reassuring feeling. You returned his embrace and stayed that way for as long as you could. Night. Finally, he let go, giving you another smile. Then Cove started walking away, but you remained there, frozen in the middle of the stream. You watched him and wondered, how many more times will he be able to say that he'll see you tomorrow? You hoped for countless more times. Finally, you turned back to your own house. You vowed to yourself that you would make the most of every moment you had this summer. All right, we're finally... Oh, excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> We're finally at the moments for step three. We got hang, we got errands, we got talks, we got charity, we got drive. I wonder if either one of us has her driver's license. Maybe that's what this is for. Hmm. We got reflection, we got late night, we got... Serendipity. I don't know what that is. We got boating and we got happiness. But that'll be next time, so peace out, everyone. Take care.